So it's recently been confirmed from sources in Spain that Jao Felix will be allowed to leave Atletico Madrid in January and leave Atletico Madrid on loan in January. Or Manchester United desperate for an attacker. They seem to be the favourites to land Jao Felix. Tier 1 journalist David Ornstein confirmed if Ronaldo left Manchester United, it was extremely likely that Manchester United would invest in January in attack in getting a striker and that investment could be someone they buy with the money they save from Ronaldo's wages. We save 17 million in Ronaldo's wages. Ronaldo is left and all the tier one sources are saying, do not worry, Man United will sign a striker in January. Ten Hag's made it clear he wants reinforcement in attack. The board are willing to back Ten Hag as they want to look attractive to potential buyers. So if they can bump up the squad in January, it increases the value of Manchester United. And well, all of a sudden United have been linked to Oshmin Gagakpo, Jao Felix and Memphis Depay tonight by reliable journalists. Today's video is a massive January update because we've got news on Jao Felix on loan that he wants to move, um, you know, that he could be able to leave Atletico. He doesn't want to be there. Depay on a free, talking to Ten Hag, terminate the deal. Obviously, Gakpo, United are favourites for that. There's Victor Oshmin, which I'm telling you this now, we will get into the news, but that's summer, not January. There's even rumours about Bellingham, Fringpom and more to United. There's a lot of January stuff about Man United. So we're going to get right into the video and dissect all the January news so you're up to date on everything, who it's come from, how reliable it is, what I think is going to happen. And then the second part of the video, we might talk about that England result. In fact, we will talk about that England result. Southgate! But wait to the end for that. Smash your like, smash your subscribe. I'm going to be live tomorrow night with a big, big transfer news show. I'm sorry there's no live tonight. I'm just too freaking tired. And there might be a morning video tomorrow as well if there's news. So do subscribe. Let's get into it. So let's start with Jao Felix because I think that's the most exciting of the three. Now, Jao Felix is a player that, you know, this time a year ago, this come a couple of months ago, I didn't think he'd go to United. Now, I rate Jao Felix. He's not a proven goal scorer, but he's a good player that's a little bit overpriced. But Jao Felix is not happy at Atletico Madrid. He wants out of Atletico Madrid and he's an attacking player. He needs to be playing in a system like Ten Hag's. Perhaps he needs to be playing in a better, better league, in a better system. And it's come to the conclusion that Atletico Madrid are going to let Jao Felix go. There is rumours that Jao Felix could go on loan with an obligation to buy and Man United are the favourites to get him. You've got to think who right now needs an, a striker or a centre forward more than anyone. Manchester United, you know, we've got Martial who's made a glass and that is it. Who's got a bit of money to spend and wants to impress some new potential buyers? Manchester United. And reportedly, Jao Felix would be interested in going to United because, you know, people say, why would Jao Felix want to go to United? He's playing under Simone at Atletico Madrid. The Premier League is better than La Liga, absolutely clear. You know, people from four, fifth place teams in La Liga want to go to like Wolves who are fighting relegation and Villa. You know, the Premier League is clear of La Liga. And if you're a young player, you see where Eric Tenal plays, the way he develops youth. You know, you want to play under Eric Ten Hag. And Jao Felix is very much open to the idea of United. You know, Juventus are interested. Look at Juventus. You know, right now, United looks more interesting than Juventus. PSG is not guaranteed game time. Bayern Munich, that's the Farmers League. United is probably the real option for Jao Felix, especially alone in January. Now, the news has come out that actually Atletico Madrid are going to let Jao Felix go. There was a question of United would like Felix, Felix would like United, but would Atletico let him go? Well, this is the report. It was said by Marca today... Joe Felix is close to leaving Atletico in January. They mentioned that he was going to leave in January. Not just go, but in January. Joe Felix is close to leaving Atletico in January. Manchester United, Bayern Munich, PSG and Chelsea are great candidates to sign him. And it was also said by AS that Atletico Madrid will allow Joe Felix to, to leave the club on loan after receiving no offers for the forward. And the once away Portuguese star has been linked with a move to Manchester United and PSG. So you're saying that he'll be allowed to leave in January and he'll allowed to be able to leave he will be allowed to leave on loan. It was also said about Joe Felix that Joe Felix could join Manchester United in January as Cristiano Ronaldo's replacement, a loan deal with an obligation to buy as a possibility. Ronaldo leaves, Joe Felix is allow, allowed to leave, and Joe Felix is allowed to leave on loan in January. Who needs someone and who what would Man United rather do? A loan deal or spend some money? A loan deal. It makes sense to get Joe Felix, but because it makes sense, I don't trust the board to do it. I still think maybe we're going to edge towards Gap Gapo, and I still, you know, these are okay sources, but they're not your Ornstein's, you're not, they're not your Fabrizio Romanas. Although there's indication about Jao Felix to Manchester United in January, you know, if it was Ornstein, if it was Romano, if it was the Athletic, I'd be like, whoa! But it's, they're not the sources that make you jump out your skin. But there is something in Jao Felix to United, it would be a good move. Um, I think he's a player that would be overpriced, but I think he's a good player, he can play deeper in that Bruno role. And something I've spoke about on the channel is, 
And right now we're in a place in football where the number nine isn't as important as it used to be. You know, Man City have signed Haaland, they seem to have got worse, as good as Haaland is. Liverpool signed Nunes, seems to get worse, as good as Nunes is. Ronaldo's come in, we seem to get worse as the team, as good as Ronaldo was, and he scored 18 goals in the Premier League for us. You know, Arsenal don't sign a proper nine, they sign Jesus, and, and they get better. You know, the way football's moving, you know, it's, it's almost about a nine that can link up play as well as, but, but, but can also score goals. And Jao Felix is that kind of player. And I think, you know, we're going to talk about a player that scores goals, that's getting goals at the World Cup in Gapo in a second. But I think if Jao Felix is available, which reportedly is, and reportedly he'd like United, then keep an eye on this. And make sure you're subscribed so you're up to date on all of this. Gapo is obviously the player we spoke about in my video earlier today. Gap, we obviously know, I'm going to just round this up in 20 seconds. Gapo, he's allowed to leave PSV. PSV will let him go for about 40, 50 million. Brilliant form, almost joined United in the summer, but we didn't have the budget. Ten Hag wants Gapo. Gapo wanted to come to United. Personal terms were agreed in the summer. Ten Hag and Gapo share an agent. Ten Hag, Gapo, very easy to do. PSV needs to sell. Room van is manager. Gapo, such an easy deal to do. However, good form, competition. This was said by one of the best sources, top, top tier source in the Netherlands. I think this was the source that actually confirmed Malassia before anyone else even knew who it was. Uh, but this source said... The update on Gapo, his focus is completely on the World Cup, followed by talks with agents of top clubs. United, Real Madrid, Liverpool and Bayern Munich are the clubs that seem to be in for him and certainly not foregone conclusion uh, that he is going, but target amount 50 million. They're saying, look, he's focused on the World Cup, then he'll talk to teams, target amount 50 million, move. That is the situation on Gapo. But you've got Jao Felix, you've got Gapo, two exciting players now. Who's the board? Murta Arnold. Although reports of new owners could take a while, who's like to be here in January? Glazers, who could be completely three Dutch and has a lot of Instagram followers. Depay, let's get into this. Depay is also on Manchester United's list. Ten Hag can really imagine bringing him back. There's contact between all parties. Barca would even terminate the contract. The source in Platy goal. Memphis Depay. This is what I could see happening. Barca need Depay off the wage bill. Goes to United on a free. He's been in talks with Ten Hag. Easy deal. Bish bash bosh done. That will be our board. You know, gap point. Jao Felix, now nah, let's get Depay. Now I like Depay, he's a decent signer, but you know, if Jao Felix and Gapo are possible, why are we getting Depay? You know, I know that we spent a lot of money in the summer, so you don't want to spend a lot in January, but actually, what, why Depay? It flopped at United the first time. You know, I take Depay over no one, I take Depay over a lot of people that United will probably go for, but you know, for me, Gapo and, and Felix go way ahead of Depay. I think Depay is definitely a realistic one. Barca wanted to get rid of him. He's had talks with Ten Hag, good source saying this as well. I would keep an eye on Depay. It was also said Oshmin to United. It just said that Oshmin is one of the top candidates to replace Ronaldo at United. But the problem is Napoli don't want to let him go in January regardless of the money. And United don't want to pay £100 million, So no negotiations yet. I believe summer target is Oshmin. And I think if, the, if Man United really want Oshmin, they'd get Depay on a free in January. And then save their money and get Oshmin in summer. Because there's no way Napoli will sell Oshmin in January. That is potential. Or we get Jao Felix on loan with an obligation to buy. If he doesn't do well, we, we get we get Oshmin. I think Oshmin is who Ten Hag wants long term, but he knows he can't get him in January. Short term, will we spend money on Gapo? Will we go for Jao Felix? Will we go for Depay? I'm thinking Depay. I wouldn't be shocked if he got some 33-year-old on loan like Chippo Moten as well. But that is the January transfer news, by the way, guys. That is kind of a roundup of all the news. And now we're going to talk about that England. So I didn't want to make a video on the England game because it was such a shit game that I didn't actually want to make a whole video dedicated to it. But I thought, you know, I'd talk about it for the last two minutes of this video for you guys that want my opinion. Fucking Southgate, boring, 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 boring. Oh my God, I wasted 90 minutes of my life. You know, I was asleep for 20 minutes of that game. I, I, I couldn't stay awake. I was so bored. Um, so tired as well. We got outclassed by a nation that calls the beautiful game soccer. That should be criminal. That should be criminal. Calling the game soccer, Qatar should lock them up for that. Soccer. How? How? It's a foot. You use your foot and it's a ball. And you call some game with an egg football. Disg no, nah, I'm joking about that. But anyway, look. Mason Mount, 90 minutes, invisible. Why isn't Foden coming on? I'm not... I'm not one of those people that's realistic. Foden's never been great for England. But when there's nothing happening and Mason Mount is not great either, you've got to put Foden on. Jordan Henderson's sub made no sense. Rashford on the right wing. Now, Rashford needed to come on. Oh, you got you put Rashford on the right to accommodate Grealish. Well fucking done. This is what should have happened. Rashford should have gone on the left for Sterling. Foden should have gone in the 10 for Mount. That's what should have happened. Maybe Carvin Phillips for Bellingham. Maybe. Because Bellingham weren't having a good game. But not acceptable from Southgate. And this is why I've been a Southgate out. Iran was brilliant. 
But as soon as we play a team that actually wants to attack us and do a bit of something and gets hold of the midfield, pff, useless. Useless, useless, useless. But who weren't useless? The Man United boys did us proud. Harry Maguire, man of the match. Luke Shaw, second best player on the pitch. Two best players on the pitch were Maguire and Luke Shaw. Absolutely fantastic. Rashford came on, but, you know, when he had like eight minutes. But he was okay, actually. He tried to make things happen. But Man United boys did us proud, so at least I've got something to talk about. I think we're out of the group now because we've got four points. So unless Wales win... They'll be on four points, won't they? Equal with us. And then, so if Wales and USA win, we get knocked out. Or if Wales and Iran win, we get knocked out. I think as long as we get a point versus Wales, we're through, right? I don't know. But I mean, we better not get knocked out of that group. That's my thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts down below. But yeah, not good. Not good.